Hi, this is Matt from SolidWorks, and we're backstage at SolidWorks World 2012. Um, I have with me Bruno Maisonnier from Aldebaran Robotics in Hello. France. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. Um, you were just on stage, and you, you showed us and talked about the Now robot that, uh, that we've been enjoying for three days now. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the, the Now robot as far as, you know, why did you build it, what's its purpose, um, you know, what do you see as its future? The, the, the basic of this story of the, the adventure is really uh, close to what happened with the PC revolution 30 years ago. Uh, at that time, I was a student. I was one of those who developed his own microcomputer uh, with electronic boards and so on, without screen, without a, uh, with a tape, without a floppy disk and so on. And, and the first PCs came. Uh, I remember the first PET from Commodore or the first Apple II, uh, the first one. And, and uh, I've seen hundreds of thousands of friends, student friends of, or other people buying computers, totally useless, very expensive, uh, just for fun. Well, maybe not. We knew at that time that the revolution was on, on the move. And we wanted to be part of that. We wanted to, to, to help, we wanted to take uh, this opportunity. And I told myself, I was already a fan of fiction books and electronics and future technologies and robots. And I told myself that one day the same would come with the robots. <clears throat> and I said, okay, I want to be ready. I want to have my company uh, riding on the wave of this uh, the revolution of robots that would come here. But it was not the right time. So I decided to, to have another job, but keeping permanently in mind as a utopia what I wanted to do and uh, during my holidays uh, training on new technologies and developing robots and improving day after day and in parallel having my professional life getting expertise in, in business, finances, uh, sales, marketing, international and so on. So this is how it, how it happened. And in 2004, 2005 I told myself that it was the right time. So that's how I, I launched the campaign. So I know you place a lot of value on, on aesthetics and design of the robot itself. The robot itself is very cute. Um, you know, how, do you, how, did you, how did you research the way, you know, how did you decide how the robot should look aesthetically? Uh, when you have a dream, when for years you think about uh, developing a robot, you can easily uh, mistake yourself. Uh, so the question for me was to try having an external point of view about how the robot should be, what for. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was the, the beginning of the campaign. And the feedback I got uh, were it has to be cute, mm -hmm. it has to be uh, whatever the internals, whatever the technology. People have to come, walk in the street, show the robot in a window display and say, wow, it's cute, I want it. Uh -huh. So this is the main driver. And uh, when you say cute, when I say cute, it's more than cute, it has to be easy to use. I don't want to add, to increase the techno stress we yeah. all have with all these systems. You have to learn, you are buying a new phone, well, you have to learn how it works because it's intuitive, but not intuitive the same way than your previous one. Yeah. Uh, so I don't want to increase the techno stress of people. So it has to be fluid, it has to be easy to use, it has to be nice. This is what I call cute. So, uh, so that's why I wanted to do But at the beginning, I had no money at all. So I began with the challenge. I wanted to, to, to post in a school, in a design school in France. Wow, if one of uh, uh, two students want to try designing a robot, uh -huh. so uh, I will launch a challenge and the winner will win 1,000 USD, something like that. I had no money at all. And uh, I began with a school in Paris called Crapol. And the assistant of the, the CEO of the school uh, uh, saw me uh, putting the, the announce about, about this challenge. <clears throat> and she said, well, I know that the CEO is very interested in this kind of thing, so he has some time if you want to meet him. And uh, it was in September, beginning of the scholar year. And we spent four hours together, and after four hours he decided to change the program of his school and having all the fourth and fifth year students as well as the teachers working at robots. So I had in exchange to be two hours present uh, weekly uh, in the school to to uh, interact with the students. But based on that, I got 42 different proposals, 42 different designs. So some were awful, some were totally mechanical ones, but I got several that were very nice designs. So it, it was the beginning. That's how I got this very interesting design. So what role does uh, SolidWorks play in the design of the robot? Uh, in the look, uh, nothing. 
came before. Uh -huh. uh, but, but after that, uh, we had to, to, to design all the parts. Uh, we began with another tool, as, as I said. Uh, but each time I was hiring some intern or some staff member, uh, he knew about SOLIDWORKS, but not about the other tool. So I had to retrain him towards the previous two, well, and finally I decided to move and migrate towards SOLIDWORKS. So that was my first contact, that has been my first contact with SOLIDWORKS. Each and every student, it was in France, it is in France, each and every student already knew about SOLIDWORKS, uh, and, and that's, that's how we moved, right. I agree. And one last question for yeah. you. On the stage you talked about uh, some of the work that you're doing in autism research with yeah. children. But I know you're doing some other things, um, particularly around um, the mobility for, for elderly people. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's more than things that we are doing. It's not us that are doing it. Sure. It's a community of users. There are close to 500 research labs, or schools, and, and hobbies working at, uh, with this robot trying uh, developing applications. You know, it's like a computer. If you have application, it can do great. If you don't have application, it's doing nothing. So we have to have application for the robot. So some are working at uh, helping autistic kids. Some others are, are we, uh, working at helping uh, old people turning blind. Because when you are uh, born blind, so you have some systems, tools, so you can learn, you can adapt yourself. But you, when you got old without uh, uh, having time to adapt, uh, without possibility for that, then you need to have tools that are helping you. So the robot is great at, uh, at helping. Hey, hey, now come here. Yes, what do you want me to do? Can you please uh, read me my, uh, my mail, so the news, or uh, put me through my uh, children? And so the robot is really helping you, uh, even if you cannot see anything. And we got... Uh, large companies like uh, insurance companies uh, come in and saying, oh, we have offers helping old people or watching for old people or monitoring, or, uh, but they don't want to be seen as someone that has to be monitored with some uh, neck or, yeah. or ring uh, with some electronic system. So uh, is it possible to have a robot as a nice companion that they will interact with? But by the way, when they have a robot at home, the grandchildren are coming more often to see them. <laughs> but at the same time, we as insurance company are able to take the control of the robot and to monitor uh, when needed. So kind of things that uh, they are doing. And we have the same kind of things. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, having the robot as an extension for uh, disabled people that cannot move any, uh, anymore, that are in their bed. Then uh, where is my remote control? Where is this? So the robot is able to remotely control your TV set, for instance, or this kind of things. So many people are enhancing the possibilities of uh, usage of the robot. That's really cool to hear. I'll be interested to see what, you know, yeah. how, that, how that works out. Bruno, thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you want to learn more about uh, the Now Robot, um, you can visit Bruno's website. Uh, it's aldebaronrobotics.com, yeah. correct? And, uh, and thank you again, and, and thank yeah. you for joining us as Oliver. Well, thank so. you for your interest, and you know, uh, I appreciated a lot of the emotion that came from the people who saw the robot. It's really boosting us, it's really uh, uh, helping us uh, going further and further. That's great. That's great. That. So thank you for your emotions. Thank you.